So in this video, I come to the most amazing woodland in the most amazing autumn season, in the most amazing fog, and get epic photos. Well, hopefully anyway. The first three things are right. Ah, oh, let's go. Morning everybody. Well, the plan was to get here today to scout some compositions out for the fog tomorrow. But as you can see, we have fog today. I'm so excited. This is Padley Gorge, one of the favorite places for doing woodland photography and it's peak autumn. It doesn't get better than this. So the idea was to, in the start of the video to just try and find some compositions. But as you can see here, this is the most amazing fog. So I'm just gonna spend more time doing photography, less time doing video. It's gonna be short little clips and I might just talk a little bit more about it when I get back to the studio, but hopefully I'll be able to show you a little bit of it. But there's amazing oak trees like this. There's still a little bit of color. I'm hoping as I go down into the gorge a little bit, the color's gonna be a bit better. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> so usually every time I come to Padley Gorge, I just walk straight past these trees and I've always thought they look pretty good. Um, so there are these trees here, which are just literally by the road um, for anybody that's coming here. And you can see that I've just got, um, let me just turn you around. I've just got this composition here. And what I've tried to do is I've tried to just make sure that I've got a gap through here, which is quite nice. Now it's quite bright up here, but the fog helps just to sort of separate it all. So again, just quite close to where you are. Sometimes you want to hike miles, don't you, to try and find something, but actually this tree just looks fantastic. I've got to be a little bit careful because this branch comes quite a long way forward and these leaves. So I've got to make sure that I've got the depth of field right, but I just like the separation between this tree, the trees in the background and these rocks with the oak on, with the um, moss on just looks fantastic. God, I hope this fog stays. And to be honest, it's clear above, so there's a chance that when the sun comes out, it'll just sort of start to clear and we'll get some unbelievable conditions. Okay, so in this shot, um, I really like these trees here and I like the sort of colour that's just distant in the background. But you can see that I've, I'm sort of in two minds about this tree here because it sort of it looks a bit odd on the left hand side of the frame so I'm going to try and take a wider shot with this tree in it and then take a, a, a closer in shot of just this bit here so I'll probably just come forward a little bit um, but there's not a lot of color here so as, as I drop down I think the color is going to get a little bit better I don't know because I've not been here for a while so we'll have to wait and see so this is where I first made my mistake this morning and you can see there's a lot of crossover on the trees in the top left hand side of this image. Also on this first image, this tree that's diagonal closest to the camera just is too dominant and it just doesn't work. It creates a triangle that's sort of distant from the rest of the scene. On the second image, it's slightly better, but I've still got that crossover. What I needed to do was stand probably two paces to the right and I would have got a much, much cleaner image. But as you can see throughout today, this is the first of quite a few mistakes I make because I'm just not taking my time. Oh, it just feels like I want this to last forever. It feels like I'm walking through something like in Alice in Wonderland or something. It's so amazing. conditions like this in, in woodland, what you want to try and do is not, well, first of all, take your time, but then you need to think about what the fog's doing for you and that's creating depth. So you want, want to make sure that you do have something a bit closer to the camera and something a bit further away, and then you get that idea of depth. Otherwise you can just have a very muddy shot that's just 
you can just use the dehaze slider in in um, Lightroom. So it's the it's a distance from you that's really important, which means that you've got to control depth of field as well. But I mean, there's literally shots everywhere here. I mean, I could shoot in any direction and probably find something. Um, but I've spotted something here, which is a tree just behind me. You can just see it there. And I think there's a little bit of a beech tree just at the bottom of it, which I think looks quite good. So I'm going to shoot that and um, see how we go. Okay, so I've got a shot here, which is a vertical shot. I've done a, um, a landscape version of this before, but I feel like this vertical shot might work. The only thing is that I've got, if I just sort of record this for you, I've got this tree here just going out of the frame but all this area here I really like I really like just everything that's coming through here the other thing is that I think the sun is starting to just give a little bit of an extra glow to the scene but I'm going to take this I'm not 100% sure about it because of this tree and I've messed around with it for about 10 minutes and I'm just not not 100% sure but I think I'll take this and then I'm just going to walk down to a composition I took down there in the past and I just want to see if I can get it with a little bit more colour. So I'm quite excited about this one I think. Um, so we've got this sort of young beech tree here and these tree, this tree here is quite sort of dominant in the frame. Um, but I feel that the trees on the right hand side and this beech tree are enough just to balance it. Uh, the fog's just dissipated just a little bit, which may be quite good because I've not got anything really close to the camera. Um, so there's gonna be some attenuation of the light when I get to this beech tree. In fact, what I might do is I might just come a little bit closer. And it's just a question of making sure I separate all the trees correctly. I think it'll work okay. And I've also shot with and without a polarizer. Um, there's a little bit of um, dampness on the leaves, not a lot, but a little bit and a little bit of light. So it might just bring out a little bit more saturation. We'll just have to wait and see. There's literally shots everywhere here. Wow. Okay, I am so excited because I've got something from this that I think is going to work. So I've got a landscape shot and I've managed to sort of arrange these trees and this foreground wood just so it works so nice. There's a little bit of problem that that tree on the um, right hand side may not work, but I think everything else works. And there's just the light that's coming through is quite nice at the moment. It's just creating a sort of a nice sort of glow to everything. <laughs> oh, this is so amazing. Yes, 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 yes. Right, take the photo, take the photo, don't slip, don't slip. So sometimes when the conditions like this, you can get caught out and um, start just snapping at everything because you get amazing trees like that one I've just walked past there. And that's fine, you'll get some good shots, but you won't get amazing shots. That's what I'm doing at the moment. So I'm gonna slow down a bit, just take my time. This is a beautiful area. And just see what I can find and try and be a little bit more purposeful with my compositions. <laughs> Did I say it doesn't get better than this? Mm, I don't think it does. This is literally a dream. Okay, I found this old fallen down tree and I thought it'd be interesting um, just to see how many different shots I could get of it. Different compositions, different angles. So I'm starting with like a 45 millimeter shot, just a standard shot here with, with the tree in the foreground. It's gonna be a little bit difficult to focus this, I think. So I've gotta be careful about it. Probably need to go to like F14 
and think quite carefully where I focus. Um, and then I'll probably do one a little bit closer, sort of somewhere down here. The only problem is that there's two trees here that you might be, not be able to see on the camera, I'm not sure, but they're really close together and they're just annoying because they just look a bit weird. But for some reason they're just stuck together. Right, let's try this. So there's a shot here that I've always uh, wanted to retake as a portrait rather than a landscape with these rocks in. I've got pretty much the same conditions as the one I took last time, but um, I feel like the ferns are just a little bit better and that has just kept its leaves in the background. Um, so perfect fog, perfect conditions. I'll show you the shot in a minute. I've just got these rocks. I just got a bit more room around them. I'm going to do a close up on them, but I think the one with a bit more room around them will work a little bit better. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so I've seen a scene here and it's fairly, it's fairly messy and complex, but I think it works. I, the reason I think it works is that there's variation in luminosity in, in the scene. So let me explain. There's also some nice lines. So I've got this quite close tree here, this silver birch that's quite dark and it's got just a few leaves left on it. And then I've got these two silver birches receding into the background and then the bracken here. The problem is that getting it all in focus is almost impossible. <laughs> so I'm trying to just work out my focus point because I don't think I can get everything in focus and then just work it out from there. But Just incredible. Okay, I think that's it. I'm gonna go and get a coffee. I've been out for three hours now, three and a half hours in fact, and the fog's pretty much gone. So I'm going to recharge the batteries, both in me and my camera, and then I'm going to come back out later if my back's up to it and see if I can find some different compositions ready for tomorrow morning. So good. So the fog's just dropped again. I'm walking back and I've spotted this tree that I think I took before. I can't remember. You'll probably tell me. Tell me in the comments if I took this tree before. Um, and also, please, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up because... God, it doesn't get better than this, does it? If this video doesn't deserve a thumbs up, I don't know what does. Um, but anyway, I found this tree, and this branch here from this other tree, I've just managed to sort of fit nicely, like a little Lego into the other tree. So, um, who says that? Like a little Lego, anyway. So basically, I've got a nice composition on it. I'm using a polarizer and without a polarizer. I'll show you both shots. It looks pretty amazing. Oh. I just don't want to stop. Okay, second day now, I'm back with Enchanted Oaks. And I wanted to just take a shot here in these different conditions before I go and rectify some of the mistakes that I took yesterday. And we'll talk about those in a minute. Um, yeah, so this is, this is probably one of my favorite shots of all times. And um, yeah, it's gonna be different with the green and the orange sort of autumnal tones. I think it won't be as good, but you never know. I'm also gonna take some detail shots around some of it as well that I didn't take last time. <sighs> Can't wait. Okay, so you don't often get a second chance at fog, but yesterday I looked at my photos last night and I made some mistakes. As you've probably seen, because you've probably seen that part of the video already and you've probably already pointed out the mistakes, but a lot of it was just to do with just not being careful about some of the branch positioning and it makes such a big difference in woodland photography. You can get carried away with the scene and not concentrate so much on the composition sometimes because you think, oh, this just looks amazing. And then when you get back, you get taken away from the environment, but you see 
the scene, um, you see the actual composition and, and I made, made mistakes. So I'm not going to do that, um, I'm going to keep things simple and I've found my first composition um, and I like this, I think it's going to work. Um, so it's just a silver birch tree with a dead branch that's broken and you can see I've just, it's just really simple, I've got a little bit of a fern here and then I've got this tree in the background. The tree in the background is going to be out of focus but it doesn't matter because it's foggy. Um, and that's it, it's as simple as that, good starter. I think this is a bit better, probably going to get back and change your mind again, but I think this is a good scene. So, I was walking along and I saw this tree with this rock and this little fern here and I really like that, I felt that looked like a really nice almost composition on its own and then in the background I saw this tree here so I've just been trying to work out a position to get that tree and that fern and tree combination correct so what I like is these trees over here that I think add to sort of keeping your eye in the image so your eye can go up here it keeps your eye in the image and then <clears throat> this is the tricky bit here just this bit here and I think that's about as best as I can do it. I think it's pretty good though. Um, definitely check this, double checked it, not rushing. I think this is good. And yeah, I'll probably just take another shot just to make sure I've got the right focus point. Again, it's quite tricky because I'm shooting at around about sort of 40 millimeters. So, and this tree's quite close to me. This tree is so amazing. I'm sure many people have photographed this tree because it's quite close to the path, but I think I've got a reasonably interesting composition. I don't know that it's just too complicated in this region here. So if something's quite complicated and then your eye can draw to it and I'm just a little bit worried. Um, I think I probably just need to go a bit wider than that. So like that, obviously I won't have this tree on the right hand side, but I spent a lot of time just trying to get this gap here right. I think I've got it. I think there's a few different versions of this that I can show, but the background, and this is why you need fog, is just so good because this sort of separates a little bit from the tree behind it. <clears throat> it's just unbelievable at the moment here. It's oh, just unbelievable. Okay, so I found the composition here, which is quite interesting actually. There's a really nice tree root, uh, as you can see just here. And I've actually got a little bit more in the bottom of the frame on the photo, because it's a, quite, it's a different aspect ratio. Um, and it just shows you this, how important it is to just think about positioning. So if I just sort of show you around this a little bit. So this is the shot, that the final shot that I went for. So. What I'll do though, is I'll turn this around. That's the shot that I went for, around about that. And I started, I arrived down here, and I was trying to find a composition like that. But I couldn't work out exactly where to be. So I went up here, and then eventually you can see that I went up right on top of the rock there. And that ended up being the best position for the composition. And it just shows that you've just got to work a composition sometimes. It just doesn't happen. Um, and I think yesterday I was just snapping away because everything looked amazing. I really like this. I think it's going to work really well. So I've come into the silver birches now and 
it's so sort of quiet and peaceful here it's so beautiful um, and I've got this little composition here which is a little tricky and I think there's a group in again similar to that other one that I spoke about where there's a group of trees here which may or may not work but I love the just softness of the scene it's so beautiful and the textures and sort of soft muted colors just look really good so I'm going to take this and then I know there's some nice stones down there so I'm going to go and photograph those I'd like to get my phone out first and just have a look. Yeah, I think this, yeah, so there's quite a nice shot here. I'll show you in a minute, but I like these rocks here um, and this tree in the background. So I might come and set my camera up here. I think it looks pretty good. <sighs> Still going and I don't know how long this video is going to be. It's going to be long, isn't it? But I, I just can't believe it. Just look around me. It's just, there's just a beauty everywhere. And the silver birches just have still got the leaves really i mean not all the leaves but just enough and you can see in this composition here which is exactly the sort of thing i had in my mind which you should never have something in your mind but i've got this sort of central sil silver birch tree here i've got some really nice rocks but what makes i think the shot is that i've got this tree that's just in the background here just peeping through the mist and it's very subtle but it's just really nice now i could go out a little bit wider and if I went out wider, then I'd also get this tree in. And I think I'm going to do that, but then I think I get too many, too much rocks down here because I have to go lower as well. So we'll see. I'll take a few different compositions. And we'll see which is best. But this is, this is about as good as it gets. I'm in heaven, if you didn't notice. <laughs> It's really interesting how your mind works um, with compositions and photography when the conditions are very transient. So yesterday I came, I'd not had fog all year, I was dead excited and I just sort of ran around a bit like a headless chicken trying to find some compositions. I think I found a couple, I, I got lucky I think really. And then this morning um, I've been out and I've really thought carefully about all my compositions and the reason that i've been able to do that is because the fog it's just i know it's going to last all day because it did yesterday i don't think it's going to change i've looked at the wind um so i've got this fog that i know is going to last all day so i'm not rushing and it's hard to instill that when they are transient the conditions because you can't get as many con compositions but as i always say and i'm not really good at taking my own advice you've just got to try and get fewer compositions and make a better job of them because i messed up yesterday as you saw right this is just amazing i'm going to go back to the studio we're going to print some out we'll talk a bit more about it it's a long video it's going to be a long video this it's probably going to be 30 40 minutes but i think it's worth it because this is two of the most spectacular days of photography i think i've ever had it doesn't get better than this <laughs> wow Okay, I've just finished printing a few images off and I'm gonna take these up to the log cabin, the, my studio up there and show you them. Um, what an amazing couple of days that was. I definitely just lost my head on the first day and I showed you some of my better images, but I took so many Im images that just didn't work. But I wanna show you some of the images that I didn't show in the video, as well as some of the ones that I did show in the video and tell you a little bit more about the lessons that I learned from that trip. Um, so we'll take these up there. Before we go up there, we'll pass by my camper van because I've just got a quick message from this week's sponsor. Oh, it's so good to be back in my camper van. I can't wait to get back out in my camper van. I think I'm not that far off now, so I'm really keen to make sure I've got everything set up right. And this is gonna really help me. Anchor have kindly sponsored this week's video and they've sent me the Anchor 767, which is their latest powerhouse and it's two kilowatt hours of power. So at the moment, I've got my computer plugged in through the USB-C here and that gives 100 watts of charging. I've got um, this in, which can charge my drone. It's not charging at the moment. I've got my phone plugged in. I've also got the lights that are lighting me at the moment plugged in. 
and um, I'm charging my battery for my camera here. And I've also got a kettle plugged in. And it's so amazing it can charge all those things. What's also really good about it is that it can fast charge as well. It also uses gallium nitride technology, which is super efficient when it's charging and discharging. So you know that you're making the best use of that energy in it. Um, and it's just invaluable for when you're in a camper van. But what's also invaluable, and I actually used it last night, is we have quite a lot of power cuts here. I live in the countryside and we had one last night and I left this plugged in to my NAS, my computer, my printer, and also my um, router for my Wi-Fi. And it switched over, it's a UPS power source. So as soon as it detected a power loss, it switched over, used the battery, and it, I can power all those things for a day which is incredible. So if you're looking to get one of these, um, there's a link in the description. Make sure you check out Anchor's Powerhouse, the 767. It's really fantastic. They also have smaller versions as well. Um, and I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea. So boil the kettle. And just whilst I make my cup of tea. And the other good thing, just whilst I'm pouring this out, is that um, it's super portable this, it's got an extendable handle, you can pull it on its wheels and that makes it super easy to move. If you're camping somewhere and you just want to drag it along somewhere, it makes it really, really easy. Especially good for somebody with a bad back. Right, let's go and have a look at those prints. Right, got my cup of tea, got some prints. Let's have a look at them. Right, so before we just sort of get into these prints and oh, I've got some really good images, even ones that you haven't seen on, on the video there to show you, I just wanted to reiterate just how important it is to just take your time and not rush and try and take so many images. It's so difficult to do. I failed miserably on that first day because I just wanted to just take as much as I could because it's not often you get fog so uh, deep down into, into the gorge there. Um, some of the photos turned out better than I thought in, in the end, but there was a lot of mistakes that I made um, and I pointed those out um, in the video as we went round and, and went through it. But if you just take your time on the second day I did and a lot of it I didn't show on video and I want to show these, these images now, then you can get better images. So I'm going to show this first image here and this one is um, one that I took on the second day and it, this is um, at the top of Padley Gorge and I was just experimenting. I talked about this just being a little bit higher up and I'd, I'd gone up with my tripod and I think it made a really big difference but there's quite a few things on here that I think worked really, really well. So I really like this tree sort of fading into the mist going out here. There's a nice sort of diagonal line that comes through here as well. And then there's an opposing diagonal line that sort of goes here. I always like trying to do those opposing diagonal lines. I think they work well. The color balance on this really works well. The autumnal tones are good. There's sort of the little bit of the stream. I would have liked more of the stream in the bottom, but you can see that there's a stream there. And I feel like there's just lots of elements to this that just work well and all the trees are just nicely aligned. So it just worked well and there's a number of other oak um, shots that I took in pretty much the same vicinity as this on the um, left hand side of the stream here. And they just all worked really well. I'm showing them on the screen now. So then um, I, I just want to talk a little bit more about the silver birches. So this is where I spent a little bit more time concentrating on my photography and not doing video. And I got really lucky with this one, with the cow just appearing there. Um, and so I just tried to change my composition so the cow would be in the right place. And then I waited a little bit just for it to move a little bit. And I feel like that just adds just, just something, just a cherry on top, which I think is always good. You know, we've got the fog, the silver birches, the autumnal colours, and just that cow. It just gives the, the photo, it elevates it a little bit. And I think that's really important in photography. You know, you what I really want to do to create something that's super special is have just something that's a little bit better. And these just look so beautiful, these silver birches on this photo speed NST bright white paper. I just really, really like them. So then um, there's this one here, which is quite an interesting one. It, when I was taking this, I was thinking, does it look a bit unbalanced? But you know, in hindsight, when I looked at it, I, I really like it actually. I think it, I think it works quite well. Um, you could argue that it's very heavily dark in this section, but I quite like the 
contrast between the dark here and then the triangular light area here. I think that sort of juxtaposition of those two things works well with this line going through. Um, so yeah, I, I, I like this. I, I, I like this fallen tree and I took a lot of shots of this fallen tree. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is all the images that I took on Padley over those two days, all my favorite images, um, I'm gonna put on a page and I'll link it in the description below so you can see the images. Because I feel like there's so many and I'd, I'd like to share them on a web page because I feel like it's a better way of sharing them. So I'll, I'll stick those in a link in the description below. The next one was this one. So this is the shot that I took, which is gr called green, um, the, the, the really nice, image that I've got in the summer, um, and I'll show you that image now, and this is the autumnal version of it. It took a while to get the right composition, I had to sort of position myself just to get it just the same. So which is your favourite? I think I think mine's probably this one, um, but I'll probably change my mind on that. But uh, again, it's just all about positioning of all the trees, just making sure that they're right. And I, and I quite like the fact that there's this diagonal that sort of brings you in. Obviously in my last video, they talked about um, that the photographers doing the critique talked about my image of this, but um, yeah, I like this one, I think it worked really well. Okay, onto this one. So this, this is probably my favorite image that I have taken. I actually took this on Tuesday. So this was two weeks later than those others, but it was in similar conditions in the fog, slightly different area, but oh my God, I like this so much. <laughs> it's probably one of my favorite silver birch shots that I've taken in a long time. Um, this was taken at around about 70 millimeters. And again, I was just really purposeful, especially with these three trees here and this tree in the background, um, ab about where I positioned it. You know, I wanted to make sure that the, the distances just all worked and, and were nicely um, uh, sort of balanced between the various trees. The tonalities of this I really like. And I printed this on cotton etching paper, photos be cotton etching. And you probably can't see the actual um, texture on here, but the, the texture of this paper is so, so nice. When I sell my box sets of prints, um, which will come eventually, I'm just working so hard on them, but it just takes a long time to get to, get to them, um, then this is definitely gonna be one of the images that's included in there. Um, oh, it's just so nice. You can see like the water droplets on things. Oh, it's just, oh, I like it so much. And then finally, I wanted to show you this shot. So this was an image that I took again on Tuesday. I, I was shooting, just doing photography with Rick, actually. I think Rick's got a video coming out at some point. So when it comes out, I'll link it in the description below. But it was just so nice to get a little bit of light. So on those two days I had, we didn't have a lot of light. It was just low cloud, effectively, you know, quite dense fog. But on this day, we had a little bit of light as well. And you can just see that little bit of glow it gives to the image. And I, I like this. This this one here was really difficult because I couldn't separate this branch from this branch, but I think it works. I, I feel like, you know, the, the, the balance works really nicely. I think overall, my lesson is don't do too much. And if, you know, I could give any advice to anybody going out and doing woodland photography in the fog or, you know, any kind of woodland photography, just try and concentrate on a few less shots than I did because um, you know there's the temptation just to get as many compositions as you can, but I feel like I got a lot of good ones and not that many really excellent ones. Uh, and that's it for this Sunday. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a really long video, I know that. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the amazing conditions that I had, some of the compositions that I took, and make sure you check out the link below um, where I've shared more of these images. Thanks ever so much for watching, and until next Sunday, bye.